All right, friends, this is part two of the maze game. We're going to add some doors to our maze, add keys to our inventory. Well, we're going to have an inventory. We're going to make one and then use the ability to use you know, keys. And then finally, we're building up to the idea of having other things that we can find randomly in the maze and ultimately in later parts, you know, fight mobs and stuff like that. So this all kind of plays together. We'll also add, you know, other things like weapons, uh, you know, swords or whatever, and maybe potions, pretty much whatever we want. I guess since we're right here at the top of the screen, we might as well start here. So we're picking up right where we left off before. I'm just going to add an inventory right away uh, and, and later parts will actually probably delete these items from the inventory and start with no inventory and have the player actually find them or do some sort of work to get them just like you would in you know pretty much any game right so I'm gonna call the uh, the inventory items carried because it seems like a good name to me and um, it's a list and I'm gonna put in the list the key so uh, you know, obviously a key is going to open a door, and I'm going to go with the same maze that I had from last time, uh, from part one. I'm going to take this spot right here, and I'm going to add a pipe. So a pipe is a vertical line. It's above the enter key. So if I press shift and the enter key, I'll get a pipe. So there we go. There we have it. So that's going to be our door. And I'll represent an open door, by the way, with a, with a slash like that. But right now, it's a pipe. Okay, let's go down to our, our tree here where we're deciding, you know, whether we can, you know, go different places. And since a pipe can only be, you know, since this pipe can only be accessed by going left or right, I'm only going to deal with that for right now. Um, if I want to make a door, like a vertical door like this, I could do that uh, maybe, maybe like that. I don't know. Like that, I guess. But I'm just going to add it for the right and left for now. So, if, all right, so here we are at A. Uh, we'll keep this because we want to make sure that they don't go through walls. And we're going to add an LF right here. So I'm just going to press enter a couple times, move that else down, and I'm going to type LF. And a, a, it's going to be a test. So LF, a pipe, is in our maze. So LF, pipe, in quotes, in maze, and then the same thing as we did above it, location, minus one, and then I'm going to arrow to the right and hit a colon, and then press enter. Okay, so now I'm two spaces to the right of LF, and we're going to actually create a, a door function to handle this because it just will make our life a little easier. We um, won't have to recode this again and again. and I'm going to get information from this. So I'm going to call the information info because it's information. And I'm going to set that equal to door, which hasn't been defined yet. Like that. All right, that should be good. Let's go do that right now. Let's go write that function. So we'll come back to line 73. So I'm going to go above the while true. It doesn't really matter where I am above the while true. Um, I guess I'll just go right here. So I'm all the way to the left on line 41. I'll press enter so I get myself some space. Okay, so we're going to come up to line 42, and we're going to define our function. We're going to call it door, and for now, at least, we're not going to take any variable, so it's just going to be def door, parenthesis, parenthesis. I'm going to arrow over, put a colon, and let's, uh, let's tell them right away that, um, you know, that a door has blocked away. So let's just print this out. Print, parenthesis, quote, uh, we're putting on a new line, so it's going to be backsla backslash, that's right over the enter key, backslash, lowercase n. A door blocks the way. Okay. Arrow over, press enter. Okay, so let's now see if they have a key, right? So at this point, uh, because we put a key in, in our inventory list here, we know they do, but we can take that away. And in the future, we'll make it so that maybe they have a key or maybe they don't. You know, maybe they find keys, they have to do some work to get a key. We'll add that later. So this doesn't really make sense because, of course, they have a key. But, again, that, that'll be some level of uh, interest in, later in the game that we'll, we'll modify. 
So we're going to now check to see if they have a key because we don't really know. So we'll say if key, and notice I'm spelling key exactly, precisely the way it's spelled in our inventory. So if I use the capital K or uh, some keys with a plural or something like that, it has to match or I have to code it differently so that it, it's this, it will find it. So if key in items carried, colon, so if the key's there, let's ask them if they want to use it. So we'll tell them they have a, a key for the door, and then we'll ask them if they want to use it. Because but let's make it so that uh, there's a chance they might lose their key. So, you know, anytime we can have things be a little bit unsure in the game, it's going to be more exciting and more interesting. So uh, I went to a new line, again, backslash N. You have, you have a key. the door and then we'll ask them if they want to use it do you wish to use it okay error over oops too many too many enters <laughs> so again uh, keeping keeping track of our, our spacing here after the if it should be two spaces over and this is going to be in line with that um, so now we'll get their input so we'll ask them if they you know like yes or no so I'll say choose uh, which is just a variable name I, just, I chose, <laughs> ironically. Choose equals input, parenthesis quote, and, and I'll put this on a new line, backslash over the enter key, N, and I'll say yes, slash, no. And then I'm going to put a space, a greater inside in the space because I like it, error to over, press enter. Okay, so now I have choose equals input, and I gave them the hint, yes or no. So now um, we'll look to see if they said yes. So I'll say if y in choose colon. Uh, if y is just going to test to see if they typed yes or just y, then it'll work. So if y in choose. So now at this point, if they said yes, they want to use the key, we're going to decide if they are lucky or not if they're lucky they're going to keep their key and if they're unlucky they're going to lose their key so yeah so this is probably a little bit disjointed but let's go to line 41 now we're going to we're going to pause this function we're going to make another function we're going to make a luck function um, if you're in my class you're familiar with the luck function we've used it in the past it's going to be the same thing i'm going to say def luck notice i'm all the way to the left again with the other def same thing def luck Parenthesis, and we're going to have a variable in this one, so we can change the odds, basically. So I'm going to put odds equals, um, and this is going to be sort of our default odds. So if I don't, if I don't send a variable to it, it's going to default to be three. So odds equals three. Uh, error over colon enter. Okay. Now um, we'll get a random number if random period r a n d i n t parenthesis one comma and then it's going to be odds because odds is a number it's three unless we send a different variable to it and i'll show you that in a second so i'm going to arrow over space equals equals and i'm going to test to see if it's one all right and then finally a colon and press enter all this function is going to do is tell you if the player is lucky or not so if they're lucky we're going to return capital t true so anytime I call this function, it's going to return true. I don't have to, I, I could optionally press enter and type else return false. You don't have to do this because if it's not true, it's automatically false. So this is really unnecessary. So I'm going to delete it. You don't need that. Now we have our luck function. So down here, uh, I press enter. And so now I'm going to say if luck, and we can choose whatever odds we want. Uh, if I want it to be 1 and 3 odds, I can just put nothing there. If I want it to be like 50-50, then um, I can put a 2. And if I want it to be 1 and 100, I can put 100. Uh, so if luck 2, colon, if that luck function returns true, this next bit is going to happen. We'll put a message, message uh, equals, the message is going to be on a new line, oh, double quote it, on a new line, backslash n, the door, opens. Okay. 
So there's our message, and we're also, um, this door function is going to return information back to where it was called. And I also want that to know that the door is now open. So I'm going to return parenthesis true because the door is open and the message. This here in parentheses is a data type called a tuple. It's different than a list. Um, it's different than a dictionary or other, other information types. And we're going to have to kind of take this apart. I can't give it a list, at least I don't think. And uh, I can't give it multiple things. It, return will only take one thing. And so in this case, it's going to be one tuple. But anyway, uh, so that's if they're lucky. So I press enter here, backspace. And now I'm going to say else, so they're not lucky. Press enter. I don't have to do any tests for this because we already know they're not lucky. So I'm going to say items carried. Oh my gosh. Items carried dot remove. This is a list function. Remove. And then in parentheses, I'm going to write key. And that will take key away out of my list. All right, and the other thing I want to do is make a new message. Message equals quote. And we'll just tell them um, that the door opens, but their key is stuck. So I'm going to put this on new line two. So backslash n. So again, uh, this time we're going to have another return, but this is going to be return false because I I'm, I got to return something. So return false and return message. Okay, great. So there you go. Uh, the other thing that we have to deal with is if they said no, right, right here. We have to deal with that. So we're going to go back so that we're in line with the I in if. And now we're going to write else colon enter because there's no test necessary. Let's write a new message. We could put error handling here and, you know, tell them that they typed the wrong thing or something like that if we really wanted to. But there's no harm to the player. If they type the wrong thing, it's just going to take them back to where they get to decide again. So I'm not going to bother with that error handling. I decided. We're just going to make a new line, backslash n, and um, give them a new message like better, safe than sorry. So now we have a message, and again, we're going to return. We probably could squish these into some other way, so I had typed this less often, but it doesn't seem that bad. There we have it. Finally, we have to deal with this list. If, what if they don't have a key? So I'm going to press enter again and again and backspace this time one, two more times. So now I'm in line with the first if. And here's our else, colon, enter. And we're just going to tell them they don't have a key. Let's do message equals quote backslash n. Sadly, <laughs> sadly, you have no key. I have no key for the door. That's good. Remember, return that too. So return, quote, false. Don't forget, false and true need to be capital. Reading over this, um, when we call the door function, it's going to tell them a door block's away. We're going to look to see if they have a key. If they have a key, we're going to tell them they do. And we're going to ask them if they want to use it. If they use it, they have a 50-50 chance of opening the door and keeping their key. Or opening the door and losing their key. Finally, um, if they say no, they don't want to use it, then nothing's going to happen to their key. The door's not going to open. And if they have no key, we'll just let them know that. And the door, again, won't open. So now back down here to door. Okay, so if door, or info equals door. So that's so info now is going to be all those returns. So info is now a tuple with all those returns. So now we can just look at in info. So I can say if info bracket. Zero. So the first thing in that tuple, uh, which is true or false, is item number zero. The tuple starts at location zero. If info square brace zero and then a colon at the end, enter. So this is now a true false test. So if the door has been open, if that returned true, 
we're going to set the maze at that location, right? So maze bracket location, and it's still location minus one equals now that this open door symbol, which again, later on we could change to be, um, so we can lock that or something. You know, maybe you can make it so they keep themselves safe or something like that by locking doors, keeping mobs out or something like that. All right, the next thing we need to do is uh, set the message to be info one, because that was where our message is stored. So message equals info bracket one bracket, and that'll update our messaging. Okay, so now we just have to handle the message. So the message doesn't matter whether the door was open or not. So we're going to actually backspace this to be in line with the I and if, because the message is going to be passed either way, whether the door opened or not, we're going to have a message. So it's going to say message equals info brace one. Okay, so now that's great. So now I can just backspace this so it's neater. Um, now we can just copy this. I'm going to copy this whole function like that. So highlighted it all, everything we just did right there, control C. And we're going to go down to D. I'm going to click in front of the E and else right there and paste it in. And I have to change the um, minus to be a plus. Same with right here. And if we did everything right, this should work. So let's give it a try. So here's our door. Yeah, and a door blocks away. You have a key for the door. Do you wish to use it? Let's say no. All right, so there's our message. Let's try it again. So I'm going to try to run into the door. Say yes. The door opens. Cool. All right, we're going to stop right there. Uh, I was hoping to get a little further along in this video, but I guess we'll have to wait until next time because that's about as long as I want this video to be. So next video, part three, will deal with being able to look at our inventory, access it, use it. Uh, we'll introduce some new items that affect our health and stuff like potions and give us the ability to drop things. So that'll be part three and part four will make us able to find things, things that can be in our inventory, probably add a couple new inventory items as well, um, like swords and whatnot. We'll start to delve into you know, monsters and mobs and the like. So that'll be part four, depending on how long that takes. There may be a part five too, so we'll see.